Hello everyone! My name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen, and welcome back to my channel. I'm speaking a little bit quieter because I am currently hiding in my library because my dad is on a meeting. So if you can hear any really loud talking, that's my dad. <laughs> I also wanted to start this video because I am so excited to be doing yet another like video series, I guess this is gonna be, concerning my writing and dabbling in things that I need to improve in my writing. So if you've missed the previous video, it was on character. Characters. I really really enjoyed like watching lectures and listening to podcasts and taking notes in this trusty book here This go around as you guys probably know if you've been around on my channel is world building oh, And I'm so excited first and foremost this video specifically is going to concern the Brandon Sanderson lectures and because he has three world building lectures as part of his series that he did for his class and then I'm going to be also looking at the writing excuses podcast as well because I was doing a little bit of research on more like resources that I could use for this video and also to learn to make a world and I found that the Writing Excuses podcast did an entire season on world building. So I'm going to be slowly tackling that. So I will be focusing in this video on Brandon Sanderson <laughs> in general, his podcast and his online lecture series. So that's gonna be super fun. I am hoping that my fantasy world that I'm going to be creating in this series is going to be my fantasy world for all sorts of projects. So Project Dark, Project Dragon, Project Adventure, all of the things. <laughs> plus my D&D campaign that I'm running for my friends. I am very excited to get this going. We're gonna do a lot of learning and I'm very excited about that. So without further ado, I think today I'm going to be starting with the very first Brandon Sanderson world building lecture. later I have finished my work day and all of that loveliness and I have officially finished the first Brandon Sanderson lecture. That was a great lecture as they always seem to be. This one was specifically covering what Brandon Sanderson has coined Sanderson's laws and one of the best things about this is that these are just the rules that he's made up for himself and if they don't work for you you don't have to use them. He just likes the name Sanderson's laws. They're not actually laws. They're just there <laughs> which I love. I'm not sure how is this is going to kind of go into me physically building the world because there wasn't a lot of like elements of world building that talked over I believe that's the next lecture because he did mention something like that but this was more along the lines of like kind of what he does when he's looking at his own work and building like a magic system that was the, that was the biggest one was J Sanderson's first law which is your ability to solve problems with magic in a satisfying way is directly proportional to how well the reader will understand said magic so it was basically saying like don't do what he did in Mistborn which kind of gives Vin of deus ex machina, right? Like it gives her this thing at the very end of it, which basically saves the day that we didn't know was real until that very moment, which is just foreshadowing for the rest of it. So that he says that this law is basically foreshadowing. Like you want to lay out, you want to give your characters the tools they need to face these tasks that they're given well without having a greater power come in and save them basically. So that was Sanderson's first law, which was really interesting. It was more about the magic system but it wasn't about building it it was just like things you want to watch out for and like a little bit about building it because he gave us the sliding scale of he likes his sliding scales of like sense of wonder which is on one side and then like magic science-y like super hardcore science magic like magic makes sense and has rules and then he used the example of lord of the rings which uses boat because you have the ring you have frodo's ring for example that is technically more of a hard science thing because you know what it does it makes you invisible and it extends your life and also the consequences and the costs of it that it makes you be seen by the enemy and turns you into Gollum eventually right like you know these costs of this ring it still has a little bit of sense of mystery though because it's not fully over that side um, like you don't really know what Sauron would do with it or what like its full capabilities are in Sauron's hands but like in Bilbo's hands this is what it does and then you also have really soft wondrous magic that is Gandalf because you don't know what he can do at all, right? He's just this guy who does 
stuff off screen and it has big consequences we know because Gandalf gets resurrected into Gandalf the White right like that kind of stuff but that's like the mystical magic and y you bring these two together to make a grand feeling of this world it makes this world feel absolutely huge but also like gives the main character a tool in this situation and also a plot device because that's you gotta bring the ring to Mordor which is so interesting I really enjoyed it and the second law was really interesting because it's like the different kind of stories you can tell when you deal with magic and he talked about flaws limitations and cost both in your magic and in your character and that's where your your story will lie is in the flaws and limitations and cost of both magic and your characters because you don't like it's cool to have a power but the stories are more interesting in the flaws of that, like in the limitations of that power, you know? Like it'd be super cool to be able to fly and have unlimited telekinesis, but you get a better story when you're dealing with like what Vin has when you have limitations on your magic and you can only do so much with the ability to fly, which is she pushes off of metal to launch herself into the air, right? Like there's limitations and there's rules and guidelines to magic, which makes it more interesting because that's like your characters have to learn to live with that. I love it. I, that, that's usually where your story lies, right? Like, especially when you're dealing with character, which I did before in my previous video, you have like your story is basically in the root of your character's flaws, right? They have to learn to overcome them and stuff like that. So it was a very good, a very good lecture. And I'm intrigued to see how this will come into play when I actually start world building for myself, like going into it more. Also really intrigued to watch the next lecture, which I might do now because I'm into this <laughs> and I kind of want to do it because I'm very intrigued by it. So let's watch another Brandon Sanderson lecture. Hello friends. Excuse my very strange hair. I tried to curl the front of it this morning and it didn't really work that well. Curl by the means of like wrapping a wet strand around my finger and pinning it. Anyways, yeah, please excuse that. Hi, hello. It's the morning. It was very bright in my house today. I last night watched the second Brandon Sanderson lecture and I really enjoyed it. It was the one that went more into the actual elements of world building. And the one big takeaway from this one was that yes, a world has all these different elements. Like they have like elements that are, what did he call them? A physical setting and a cultural setting, but you don't want to have all of them. You want to do a few of them really well in your story that really pertain to the story and really make and really matter and actually are discussed in the story rather than having them all and doing 5% of all of them because then it's like, it's just too much. The reader will latch on to something you do very, very well and trust that you've done the rest of it really well, even though you haven't and you've just kind of given them brief glimpses of the rest of it. That was really interesting to me. And he said that you want to really ground your reader. Like the best way to start a book is to, instead of just overly world building and world dumping on them, is to start in a scene where a character is doing something, is wanting to do something, is active, and you do just enough world building in that specific scene, but you're focusing on the character and the plot and the reasons and stuff like that. And you're doing just enough world building around it to really hook the reader in, and then you're slowly gonna drop them in as you go. And you don't wanna do like massive chunks of world building because as we all know, we have come across many, 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 many books with pieces of just info dumping. And we all hate info dumping because it bogs us down and it makes us confused, especially in a fantasy world because we don't wanna deal with all this heavy world lore right off the bat. We want to slowly make our way into it. And I find it really funny that he explained this because then he went about to say like with my Stormlight archives, I did the exact opposite. Two prologues that I wrote were all info dump world building. And I did that because of this, 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 and this, which is so interesting to me that he's done both of these things. And he even has acknowledged that because he did that in his Stormlight archives, he has lost a lot of readers because a lot of readers were just like, I can't get through this, right? So there is that, which is really interesting to me. The main takeaway for me also was the fact that you want to blend character 
and plot with the world building because character is your number one most important thing. Plot is number two most important and then world building is a third that just kind of makes everything come together in a way. You don't necessarily need it to have a good book, right? Because we've all read good books that have great characters and great plot, but terrible world building, right? But if you have a book that has great world building, but terrible character, it's not gonna be a good book, right? We usually don't love that. So you wanna find yourself in happy medium where you support your characters by really seeing the world building elements through their eyes. So like you can just, you could tell so much about a character's life and their cultural, where they're coming from and what they've been through in their experiences when they see things and describe things, right? So there is that. And I really, really enjoyed this world building lecture. But that does mean that there is only one more and it's just a question and answer world building lecture, which <laughs> makes me sad because I wish he could do like an entire course on world building because world building is huge. But that does not mean I'm done with Brandon Sanderson. As I said at the beginning of the video, I am going to be doing also the Writing Excuses podcast, which is gonna be great because I think the entire 14th season is dedicated to world building. So I am very excited to like go through that, listen to the ones I wanna to listen to, or maybe even all of them if I have the time. Both Brandon Sanderson lectures have been complete. I have thoughts. I have notes, which is awesome. I got great takeaways that, to actually implement when you're writing a story, which is awesome. I think that's what these are really, really focused on is the elements of world building when you're actually writing a story. And that's very important, but what I'm going at with these world building videos is to create a fantasy world, right? From like ground up, we're gonna be doing the map, we're gonna be doing everything. So I think this is gonna come more in handy when I focus in on a, like a specific region of my world to write a story like in Project Dark or when I start writing Project Dragon, like that. Last night I also spent like an enormous amount of time <laughs> trying to come up with a name for my fantasy world because I had a name from Project Dark that was, I think it was Alinor or something. I've said it out loud a few times and I'm like, that's not what works for me. And for some reason I cannot find a name that really, really hits home. And I just, it's bothering me because I need this name for the realm as a whole. I have a few options that I will let like sink in and we'll see hopefully by the time I get around to actually creating the map and like drawing it, I will have a name for it. I'm going to probably start listening to those podcasts when I can because I really am interested in them. And I believe that these are also going to be not only elements of like building your world, but including them in story, which is very important. And I will need that information for when I write my stories. But because I'm doing this in a kind of a back ass word way, where I'm just straight up building a fantasy world that I can use in many different areas, I'm going to need to do like the specifics of stuff when I go into these stories themselves. Because I'm also doing a D&D campaign in this world, I do need to kind of know vaguely all around there, all of the things. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be a lot of work, and I'm on the edge of being overwhelmed. <laughs> but yeah. I will update you guys a little later when I do more things and start learning more. Hello friends. It is now Saturday. Saturday? No, it's Friday. Oh my God. <laughs> and I've decided to kind of change up my plan with this video a little bit. This is gonna be my vlog that's gonna go up on Tuesday because not only am I doing this, I am also filming a reading vlog that's gonna probably go up later in March. So I don't really have any extra content to be filming for a reading vlog. So I figured why not make this world building thing a vlog to put up on Tuesday instead. So that's where we're at. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of updates to talk about, but I don't really have time right now to do so. All right, my friends. So now I'm here in my office. I've, we've just had a nice cleaning day. I've done a bit of work this morning. I wanted to pop in officially with a little update on my world building because guys, yesterday, all day I was just buzzing with all these inspiration things for specifically my D&D campaign. And I now have a name for my realm, which I'm very happy with. And I have an idea of the beginning of my campaign, like what's gonna be the movement of the campaign right at the beginning. I don't know the details yet, but that's because I have not sat down to make up those details yet. And I need to know more of the world and I need to know more of my characters. So that has to do because I have to finish building the world and then 
kind of making enough lore to then give to my players and then they can give me back their character background so that I can make this a thing. But I have done so much work on this world so far. I have decided on a quest that I want them to go on pot potentially if they go into the specific area. I know like how I'm gonna get them to the like information in different ways that they need if in case they, you know, don't do the ones that they're supposed to. And like I kind of know the direction that it's gonna go and I have like options and I know the name of like three different kingdoms, I know the name of a kingdom that has fallen, and I know the name of the three empires on this one continent, I know the name of the continent. Guys, I have been doing so much work on this and there are apparently within this whole thing about 8,000 words of work so far, so that's awesome because I opened up a scrivener for this specifically and I have a gazillion little tabbies. I have a ton of folders, let me show you. So we have a ton of folders and like these are my PCs for the campaign. All sorts of like, this is basically just the information that people have given me, my players have given me previously. And I have the NPCs, which I've only filled out one from the one shot that I did. There is a few others that I will have to add in here. Races, that'll come up when I actually do my research on all the races of possibilities in uh, d and This is just probably gonna be like a cheat sheet for me to know what what is what. Uh, realms and places, we have so far for the realms, Feywild, Shadowfell, and Material Plane. And within the Material Plane, I have all of my stuff. I have the Continent of Ravarin, and then we have the Branham Empire with the Three Kingdoms, and then the Niran Empire and the Manid Dynasty, which I have yet to really think about. And then of course, Physical World, I have some things already thought up here. I'm gonna have to do the Pantheon, of course, the encounters, some quests, and the storyline. Um, but that is really just it. This world is growing and I'm very excited about it because that, that one mountain range that you guys saw, the Adderland mountain range, that is where I want to have Project Dragon based. So I'm very excited about this. I'm, and I'm ridiculously excited because I can start seeing the shape of the world in my head which is gonna make things so much nicer to have a map when I get to that part of this. But really this weekend, I think I'm going to try and get through a few of those Brandon Sanderson podcasts, the Writing Excuses podcast. Specifically, I'll probably search for the ones that I like actually wanna to listen to that are like relevant to this stage that I'm in right now. It's like physically crafting the world and making elements of it, which is going to be very exciting. And I'm just, I'm glad that I have this entire Scrivener here that I can just keep adding big files and then basically right now they're just note form so when I start building and adding that's when I'm gonna have like I will format it properly because currently like for example the um, Kingdom of Eliwith I have one jot note that is literally the Northern Kingdom, surrounded by a lot of wildlands, lies on the border of the Branham Empire and the Nerean Empire. The forest runs along the middle and around the beginning of the Adderlin Mountain Range, which is the natural border between the kingdoms. That's the only note I have, which is fine because that does help me then, like, imagine it in my head. But yeah, and then in the Nerean Empire, I literally have two notes for it, which is the northern section of the world encompasses a few larger land masses, and, like islands and all the mountains and where the dragon sanctuary is, because that is what Project Dragon is about, is a dragon sanctuary, which is super fun, because if you guys know D&D, usually the dragons in the game are fought and killed, so that's gonna be really fun to deal with. But yeah, that's where I'm at with my world building right now, guys, and I'm so excited about it. I just, I love it so much, and I have, like, I did a lot of research on specifically, like, Archfey, and I've, I think I've got a name for my like big bad in the whole thing and I'm really excited to continue mapping out the world and then of course mapping out the story of this campaign but that's not really what this is about. This is about world building and building this fantasy world which I'm so excited about. I'm really excited because I think in my head the way that it's gonna work is that the continent of Ravarin, Ravarin, Ravarin continent is going to be the like scene for my project adventure dragon and my D&D campaign. But then I'm gonna have another continent off to the side that's gonna be more for project dark and that kind of a thing because there's gonna be another kingdom in there and a massive forest, which is gonna be so fun. Of course, like islands all around. So I think I have it in my head and I think it's gonna work. <sighs> we'll have to figure it out, but 
yeah, those are my updates. And today I have to go into the city to buy a bunch of stuff because I'm out on a lot of... Hi! What you doing? Are you concerned about something? That's what I'm gonna do today. And then I'm gonna come back and do more work. And then I'm gonna see where the weekend takes me. Oh. Where's your mama? Where is she? Well, she's definitely not downstairs. I don't know what you're doing. Did you find her? Come here. Yeah, you found her because you're such a good girl. You're so smart. Oh. lovely friends happy Saturday officially it is actually Saturday today <laughs> I am here just doing a deep condition in my hair before I wash it and see how it turns out but I wanted to pop in because I have really exciting news and it has to do with project dream but uh, today was the day for that hashtag CP match. If you guys have watched my last writing video, I did talk about that one a little bit. It is a kind of like hashtag pit mad on Twitter where you like pitch your story and like agents will do stuff with it. But this one is specifically to find other critique partners who are in the same boat as you or you know, beta readers that will help you with your story. <laughs> and I joined it this morning and I was like scrolling through the CP match entries and I found this lovely girl who was writing an Arthurian legend book. And I was like immediately like, I don't, I just want to read this book. Can I be your CP match? And then she saw mine and she was like, oh, I love it so much. Can we be CP match people? So we're currently talking on Twitter right now, discussing our stories and like what we want from a CP match. And it's so good and I'm trying not to get too excited in case it falls through, but oh, it just to have like somebody else look at it would be amazing. And I'm so ridiculously excited, but yeah, so that's an update. I'm part of the CP match this, this month and it goes every month, every month. I think the next one is March 27th, in case you're wondering. I'm so excited, but yeah, I'm going to keep talking to her and see where we get. I'm so pumped. Oh my goodness. And another random life update. Last night I finished my sweater. That beautiful thing. Turns out it's actually a sweater dress. <laughs> it is so long. <laughs> I didn't intend it to be that long, but it's really comfortable. So that's pretty great. But yeah, well, I just thought I'd pop in with a little update. It's a good start to my Saturday. now Sunday night and I'm popping in to kind of give this vlog a little bit of a wrap up because I have thrown all my footage into my computer and I have a lot of footage for this vlog already. This specific video I intended at the beginning to do like a Brandon Sanderson focused world building type of thing and I have done that I think with the two Brandon Sanderson lectures that I watched. I did not manage to listen to any of the podcasts or finish that third lecture, but that's just a question and answer lecture, so it's not that important. I also managed to do a fair amount of work on my world in the respects to my D&D campaign and in naming the realm. I have a name for my realm now and I have a name for the continent. I have a name for the three empires on that continent and in one of those empires, I have the names for three kingdoms. So like I'm slowly breaking it down and in my head, I'm starting to get a picture of what I want, which is awesome. So that's incredible. But I was just editing this video actually. And I did mention way earlier around like the 13 minute mark that I was going to use the information for like from Brian and Sanderson's lectures because they are very story based, like world building when you're writing a story which is, as I mentioned, kind of not what I'm doing here. Like, I'm 
building a world first to then use in many different stories. So I'm doing a very broad stroke before I dive in specifically to a world. And I just had the brilliant idea that because it is currently, as I'm filming this, it's the last day of February, we're going into March. The next month after March is Camp NaNoWriMo. It's April. Camp NaNoWriMo is coming up in a month. That's crazy. I totally did not even realize that. I was thinking that once I get my general world strokes done, I'm going to focus in on one region and start planning specifically for Project Dragon. Because I really would like to start writing that for Camp Nano. And I would like to really hone in on that specific world building that I need for that story. So I think that when that comes around, we'll do more of the actual story building stuff that Brandon has mentioned in his lectures and probably in his actual podcast as well when I start listening to that. And we'll use those elements that I learned to build that story, which is going to be very exciting. And hopefully I will be using my character knowledge from my previous exploratory thing that I did in my character video. I will be using that to also build my characters for that book as well and hopefully through both the world building and the character somehow really hash out this plot and make my outline. So what I'm saying is that in March stick around because we're gonna be finishing up this massive world building stuff. I really want to do the map next I think but I think I'm gonna have that and also really focus in on the Project Dragon region and do that once I'm ready to start working on that specific story because I think that would be really fun to do. So stick around <laughs> for that. If you haven't yet, subscribe because it's gonna be a great time. I can I can just feel it. Join me on this journey and it's gonna be great. Um, another update on Project Dream. I have now two, I think, critique partners. I have that girl that I talked about earlier in this video as well as another one that I read her first three chapters for. We swapped our first three chapters just to see and I'm really excited about that because she's actually writing a middle grade story and it's weirdly started basically the same as mine which is on a moving day which is so funny. I'm very excited about that and to take you guys along with me until I talk about it in my videos as well but March is world building month so stick around because it's gonna be a great time but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like this video if you haven't, but I'll catch you in another video soon. Stay kind and keep on reading. No, wait. Stay kind and keep on writing. <laughs>